<laughs> well, here we are again. Follow me to Apex, my friends. Reaper Hunter 23 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action. Oh man. Let me tell you, I have been thinking about this game pretty much since the last time I've played it. That sounds silly. <laughs> really silly, actually. But I just keep going back to that part that we covered in the last session. Like, Jill's story so far has really stuck with me. Kinda like in the same way that Doki Doki Literature Club's intense moment <laughs> stuck with me. But that was the sheer shock and awe. This is more, uh. This is more because, I don't know. Even though I don't directly relate to what she went through, I empathize with it. Ah, hey Jill. How are you feeling? Oh, wait. Did I load the wrong... Okay. I don't know if I did. We'll find out. I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Skill? Did he run away again? Nah, I have him on errand duty. Okay, I we have not seen this yet. I thought I somehow got my save files mixed up. Buying drinks for tomorrow. Oh boy. That sounds weird, coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of our own funds. So if we're gonna spend money, we might as well get more variety. Yeah, we only have so many drinks that we could make here. Besides, those kind of walks are always good for Gil. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dog, Alma, Gil, oh, Gil invited Jamie. Ooh, pre-4th of July festivities, someone set off a firework. Still, you know four days away here as of recording oh yeah I also invited Dorothy when I called for her to spend the night with you sounds good so far invite anyone else you feel like inviting the more the merrier hopefully St St Stella and Cy come along so we can invite them I could but at this point I bet everyone's made plans that's true I'll be in my office, call me should anything arise. Alrighty. I hope those don't come through too strong. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Oh yes it is. I'm almost out of soda. Wait here, I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, a BTC bar. That's a cool jacket. Are those magnets on her head? Excuse me, do you know where the Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place always make people get lost? They should ca have called it the Minotaur. <laughs> they should have called it the Minotaur Center. Apparently they don't get the mythology joke. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right when you see a building filled with hobos. Oh man. This should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. No. Oh, screw it. I'll have a drink. What about you? Her hair looks kind of like the girls on the icon. Well, the one that the icon for the game, I guess you wouldn't really know what that's like if you haven't seen the uh, icon for the game, but it, but the girl with the purple hair that pops up on the TV sometimes, um, a brand teeny please, right. The Lilum freaks me out, the girl asked for a brand teeny. Alright, let's see here. 
Six Adelhide, three Powder Delta, aged. Ah, six. One, two, three. Come on, Charlie. Ta-da! Here you are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, miss. <laughs> Everyone says that to be me about my jacket, except the opposite, because it's like super hot. And I'm just walking around in my red coat. <laughs> well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Vela for the time being. Do people do that and make you refer to them by their character's name? And your Lilum friend is... Essentia. I get it, you're cosplaying too. Sure, let's go with that. I didn't notice that the elbow for the Lilum person here is like just straight up this metal part. It looks like it, it straight up looks like an elbow piece on an action figure or a doll or something. Have you heard of a game called Yik Bartender? I could have pronounced the letters individually, but I didn't want to. A cult classic game that has seen like six or three remaster versions by six different companies this year. Uh huh. All right. That one we're cosplaying in a group dedicated to it, and we got lost along the way. Don't let my mirror keeps flipping off my shoulder. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh yeah, a friend is cosplaying as Alex. We told him to wait outside. Or I told him to wait outside. Shouldn't- yeah, isn't it cold out there? Just- it's just a bar. They're not gonna hurt. No one else is in here. It'll be fine. Something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. Black sailor uniform? Is that what- Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. The Lilum still freaks me out. Alright, fluffy dream. What is... Almost forgot to age it. You're not fooling me this time. Here. Yep, this is the thing. Seriously though, I am really sorry if those fireworks get annoying. It's not even dark yet though. It's like almost 8.30, but you know. Summertime, longer days, not even dark. I never understand the point. Should you leave your friend outside like that? He'll be fine. He started chatting with one of the vending machines. <laughs> Future chatting with the vending machines. I wish I could. That would be interesting. They were talking about R&B music. Does your friend prefer the 1980s R&B or the 1970s? So... We're in 2070-something. And we're still talking about what would be from a hundred years ago at this point, or ninety years ago. Nineteen eighties, I think. Oh no, boss, Diddy, R and B, I'm coming. Um, you see, Diddy is a nineteen seventies purist. He's tased people for even liking nineteen eighties before. He got tased. <laughs> oh man, sigh. Oh god. He'll be fine. Vending machines have very weak ta- Why do vending machines have tasers in the first place? <laughs> He'll be confused for a couple of minutes, but that will be that. Is this like an- is that like an anti-theft measure? You should go back- go and check on him though. Right, thanks again for the directions. Please come again. At least it wasn't Franco-Belgian comic opinions this time. What? Black sailor uniform. I hope I'm just overthinking it. 
More importantly though, jeans under a skirt? Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hey Dorothy. Oh, she looks... Ah! You see, the, the, the girl I was talking about that kind of had the same hair as the girl with the green hair popped up on the screen just a second ago. Or at least that's who I was trying to convey that girl looked like. Hair-wise, anyway. Oh, hi, honey. She does seem bummed out. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Do most of them just wander? I don't know. They are machines. Maybe they have an idle setting. Can I get you something? Oh, uh, sugar rush. Yeah, that. Right. Well, hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? It's... Alright, so I don't think I... I don't think I remembered Alma's correctly last time. I never even went and checked, but I am fairly positive that, uh, Piano Woman is, like, Dorothy's favorite drink. This is, didn't you say you liked having a piano woman whenever you felt like celebrating or were feeling down? I did. Wait, I did. You actually remembered that. Oh, she's all surprised. You're so sweet. I was half expect- I, <clears throat> I was half expecting her to say that she meant a literal piano woman. <laughs> I'm glad I was wrong. So much silence. It was weird. Thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. Oh. So did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, but don't go around telling everyone about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help. But a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It, but <laughs> isn't there a lot less effort involved? I don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chances of getting any other client. Oh, I guess that would make more sense. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So from what Dana said. Oh, told me someone close to you died, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem then, you were sad and that's all I need to know. You need to know. Sorry for the loss though, I mean it. Thanks. Although I've wondered for a while, do you uh, do you Willem really understand death? Sorta kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Excuse me. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. That's weird. Like, you're just afraid you're gonna be deleted one day or something? You do. We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea that no of, of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but, the f but we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing. You seem quite not- ah! I keep kicking my stand about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live. Like I do helps me not take things for granted. No, oh, that's nice. It's a nice way to think about things. Seriously though, those laws were stupid. 
can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. That is, uh... Doesn't make sense. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some, some old book? Yeah. Common sense also has to be employed. If I remember correctly, those were the only, only, or those were only the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over a hundred years ago. Interesting. They were a reduced version of all of his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took them like they were very laws of took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. Uh, being warped over time like a game of telephone. And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need to use it in their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. <laughs> oh man. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know. It's a tad small though, sorry about that. She's like three feet tall. I don't think she cares. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Four. Why four? Because he wasn't big enough to be five. I figured if he ever got lost, at least... <laughs> at least I wanted to be able to yell, Four! <laughs> That's wonderful. It happened once, you'd be surprised how many golf players you run into. <laughs> and every time you play with him, you can say it's foreplay. <laughs> yeah. He was also named after someone. Really? Who? A little kid that wanted to transcend? What? A movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Wait, was the... wait... That's not the story of the person with the finger that she keeps around with her. Do you want anything else? Let's see if you know me that well. Give me something I'd like. Okay then. What would Dorothy order? Oh, this is... W-W-D-O. Okay, well, we already gave her a piano woman. Uh. She wouldn't want a fringe weaver. I, we gave her a bleeding Jane last one. Uh, Blue Fairy. Let's give her one of those. I know she's ordered that before. <clears throat> Whoops. <clears throat> what about this? Yep, just nice. You always order either sweet or girly drinks. It was a no-brainer. Girly and sweet drinks for a sweet girl. Huh. I still can't believe you actually remembered what I said about the piano woman. <laughs> the little hearts that flashed in her eyes, that was funny. It's always good to keep note of what regulars like, you know? True, true enough. It is really nice being able to walk in somewhere and just have them know what you want already, based on showing up there a few times. I've, al I've wondered for a while though, why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course. <laughs> Come again. Why else would I come if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out, always filled with curiosity. And you're cute, talking to cute people is nice.
There's also the bar, the way it's insulated from the noise of the c city. It's really comfortable. Ah. <laughs> and it's just a bit away from the street I'm always at, of course. A win-win situation. I see. It was weird to see you down though, especially since you're always so lively. Yeah, that is weird. Well, I wasn't down really, I was just thinking about a lot of things. Like what? Well, my mom or guardian asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. As much as I love her, being with her it's usually tiring. Guardian. An old thing about someone taking care of a Willem after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yup, and I'm proud to say that I reached psychological maturity in just one year. Oh, wasn't that a daisy? I always try to keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source grow faster. So what's wrong with your guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. We are like three feet tall. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. Another person with a dead daughter. This. Why do you know so many people? Like, well, this is like a futuristic dystopia. There's dead everything. To somebody. Huh? Dead daughter? I was deployed to her not long after she lost her daughter. <clears throat> a contrived coincidence, really. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared that she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't though, at least not consciously. At times she would just stop doing something or return a gift she's given me. If she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter onto me. What irony that years later I'd be making a living tr pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? Well, most of the time my job involves uh, role playing. It means I've gotten many clients looking exactly for that, but on the other hand, from a prof 